6.1. What is learning? Learning objectives. By the end of this section, you will be able to explain how learned behaviors are different from instincts and reflexes, define learning, and recognize and define three basic forms of learning, classical conditioning, operant conditioning, and observational learning. Birds build nests and migrate as winter approaches. Infants suckle at their mother's breast. Dogs shake water off wet fur. Salmon swim upstream to spawn, and spiders spin intricate webs. What do these seemingly unrelated behaviors have in common? They're all unlearned behaviors. Both instincts and reflexes are innate behaviors that organisms are born with. Reflexes are a motor or neural reaction to a specific stimulus in the environment. They tend to be simpler than instincts, involve the activity of specific body parts and systems, for example, the knee-jerk reflex and the contraction of the pupil in bright light, and they involve more primitive centers of the central nervous system, such as the spinal cord and the medulla. In contrast, instincts are innate behaviors that are triggered by a broader range of events, such as aging and the change of the seasons. They're more complex patterns of behavior, involve movement of the organism as a whole, for example, sexual activity or migration, and they involve higher brain centers. Both reflexes and instincts help an organism adapt to its environment and do not have to be learned. For example, every healthy human baby has a sucking reflex present at birth. Babies are born knowing how to suck on a nipple, whether that be an artificial, like a bottle, or human nipple. Nobody teaches the baby to suck, just as no one teaches a sea turtle hatchling to move toward the ocean. Learning like reflexes and instincts, allows an organism to adapt to its environment. But unlike instincts and reflexes, learned behaviors involve change and experience. Learning is a relatively permanent change in behavior or knowledge that results from experience. In contrast to the innate behaviors discussed previously, learning involves acquiring knowledge and skills through experience. Looking back at our surfing scenario, Julian will have to spend much more time training with the surfboard before he learns how to ride the waves like his father. Learning to surf, as well as any complex learning process, such as learning about the discipline of psychology, involves a complex interaction of conscious and unconscious processes. Learning has traditionally been studied in terms of its simplest components, the associations our minds automatically make between events. Our minds have a natural tendency to connect events that occur closely together or in sequence. Associative learning occurs when an organism makes connections between stimuli or events that occur together in the environment. You'll see that associative learning is central to all three basic learning processes discussed in this chapter. Classical conditioning tends to involve unconscious processes, operant conditioning tends to involve conscious processes, and observational learning adds social and cognitive layers to all the basic associative processes, both conscious and unconscious. These learning processes will be discussed in detail later in the chapter, but it's helpful to have a brief overview of each as you begin to explore how learning is understood from a psychological perspective. In classical conditioning, also known as Pavlovian conditioning, Organisms learn to associate events or stimuli that repeatedly happen together. We experience this process throughout our daily lives. For example, you might see a flash of lightning in the sky during a storm and then hear a loud boom of thunder. The sound of the thunder naturally makes you jump, as loud noises have that effect by reflex. But lightning reliably predicts the impending boom of thunder, so you may associate the two and jump when you see the lightning. Psychological researchers study this associative process by focusing on what can be seen and measured, behaviors. Researchers ask if one stimulus triggers a reflex, can we train a different stimulus to trigger that same reflex? In operant conditioning, organisms learn again to associate events, a behavior and its consequence, reinforcement or punishment. A pleasant consequence encourages more of that behavior in the future, 
whereas a punishment deters the behavior. Imagine you're teaching your dog Hodor to sit. You tell Hodor to sit and give him a treat when he does. After repeated experiences, Hodor begins to associate the act of sitting with receiving a treat. He learns that the consequence of sitting is that he gets a doggy biscuit. Conversely, if the dog is punished when exhibiting a behavior, it becomes conditioned to avoid that behavior. For example, receiving a small shock when crossing the boundary of an invisible electric fence. Observational learning extends the effective range of both classical and operant conditioning. In contrast to classical and operant conditioning, in which learning occurs only through direct experience, observational learning is the process of watching others and then imitating what they do. A lot of learning among humans and other animals comes from observational learning. To get an idea of the extra effective range that observational learning brings, consider Ben and his son Julian from the introduction. How might observation help Julian learn to surf, as opposed to learning by trial and error alone? By watching his father, he can imitate the moves that bring success and avoid the moves that lead to failure. All of the approaches covered in this chapter are part of a particular tradition in psychology called behaviorism which we discuss in the next section. However, these approaches do not represent the entire study of learning. Separate traditions of learning have taken shape within different fields of psychology, such as memory and cognition, so you'll find that other chapters will round out your understanding of the topic. Over time, these traditions tend to converge. For example, in this chapter, you'll see how cognition has, has come to play a larger role in behaviorism, whose more extreme adherents once insisted that behaviors are triggered by the environment with no intervening thought.